today we're going to take a look at section 6.1, day 3, um, and we're talking more about linear and angular speed. All right, so there's some facts that we need to know about um, both of these linear and angular speed. So the first thing is all points on the same rotating object have the same, and this should be angular speed. Okay, so if it's any point on a rotating object, so I have some examples down here, so a bike tire. So any point over here or over here or over here or over here, anything on the same object is rotating at the same speed. Okay, realistically, it's anything on the spokes too. Those are all connected as one um, object, so they have the same angular speed. Okay, the next one says if two rotating objects are connected so that they rotate as a single object, they have the same angular speed. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, ceiling fan. So I've got something in the middle of the ceiling fan that's going to rotate at the same speed as the edge of the fan blade is going to rotate because it's going to rotate in one circular motion and then the inside is going to spin at that same rate. Okay, thinking about the bike tire again, um, if I have a point on the inside of the bike tire here and a point up here, if it's going to rotate 30 degrees, it's going to rotate everything 30 degrees um, those two objects rotate at the same uh, rate. And then the last thing is if two objects are connected, okay? So again, they're connected by their rims. Um, so in this case, th this belt is connected by, uh, or this picture on the right is connected by a belt. If that belt rotates six inches, then this belt's going to rotate six inches, okay? So if they're connected um, by a belt, or in this case, by their rims. If this one turns, you know, three notches, then this one's going to rotate three notches. Um, so these have the same linear speed. Okay, so if it's one unit or a single object, like a record, a tire, or a ceiling fan, those are spinning, or um, they're spinning at the same rate or have the same angular speed. But if they're connected by their rims or by a belt, they have the same linear speed. Okay, so this is really important to think about. Um, if you've ever ridden a bike, if you think about this as, you know, the part where your pedals are, you have to pedal really a lot faster. Um, and this part is going to go around a lot more times than the entire wheel. Um, so they're spinning. They have different angular speeds, but they have the same linear speed. So that is one thing that we are going to focus on over the next couple days. If they're connected by a belt or by um, the outside, they have the same linear speeds, and if they're one unit, they have the same angular speed. All right, so let's take a look at um, this first example. Okay, so the first example says, to approximate the speed of the current of a river, the circular paddle wheel has a radius of four feet is lowered into the water. If the current causes the, wheels, or the wheel to rotate at a speed of 10 revolutions per minute, what is its current miles, or what is the speed currently in miles per hour? Okay, so again, these two things are um, connected, okay? So we know that the linear speed of the rim wheel is equal to the linear speed of the river, okay? So the rate that the speed, or the, the rate that the wheel is turning is the rate that the river is um, moving, okay? So we know that the rim of the wheel is, uh, has a radius of four feet, and we know that it's rotating at a speed of 10 revolutions per minute. Okay, so to find the uh, linear speed of the rim wheel, okay, we have to take the radius times the angular speed. Okay, so we know that the radius is four feet, and we know that the actual wheel, right, it causes the wheel to rotate 10 revolutions per minute. So remember, we've got to take that 10 revolutions and we've got to multiply by 2 pi. Okay, so when I do that, that gives me 4 times 20 pi or that gives me 80 pi. Now again, we're talking about linear speed, so that has to be distance over time. So my distance was feet, my time was per minute, so it's going to be feet per minute. There's my final um, units. However, it asks us to find the... Um, speed in miles per hour. So I'm going to go back, take away that box, because we want to figure that out in miles per hour. So then we've got to find um, 
the linear speed of the rim by taking that 80 pi feet per minute and I'm going to have to do some multiplication to change those units. Okay, so again, looking at minutes, we want to go to hours. So I know I have to put minutes up on top. And I can go right from minutes to hours. I know 60 minutes is the same as one hour. Okay, then I've got to get rid of feet. So I'm going to take feet, which is up on top, and put feet down in the bottom. And since that's feet, I know that 5,280 feet, we want to switch that into miles, is equal to one mile. All right, so again, with that fraction, I've got to multiply straight across. So I have 80 pi times 60 on top and a 5280 on the bottom. Plug that into your cal calculator, hit math, enter, enter, and that gives me 10 pi over 11 miles per hour. Okay, now, if I was asking for a speed, that really isn't a great answer. So if I take that 10 times pi divided by 11, that's approximately 2.86 miles per hour. Okay, so that means the river is moving as fast as the wheel because the river is what's spinning the wheel. So the river as well as the wheel are both rotating, or I'm sorry, are both moving at eight, uh, 2.86 miles per hour. All right, so the next example says the diameter of each wheel or the diameter of each wheel of a bicycle is 26 inches, and you're traveling 35 miles per hour. We're looking for the angular speed in radians per hour. All right, so right away, I'm hoping that you see, we've done a problem similar to this before. I see that I have inches up here, but then I have miles per hour. So we've got a small problem right here. So we know we're going to use the formula V equals R times omega. Right, because we know the radius, we know the linear speed, because miles per hour, that's my V, and this is my radius. Well, it's actually my diameter, but I know my radius is 13 inches. Okay, so before we do anything, we've got to go ahead and we've got to change that linear speed into inches per hour instead of miles per hour. Okay, so I've got 35 miles per hour, and I've got to do some changes here. Um, and I've got to change them to inches per hour. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to get rid of, I'm going to keep the hours. I'm going to get rid of the um, miles. Okay, so we're going to have to put miles down in the bottom. So miles goes down in the bottom, and I can turn that into feet. So that's 5,280 feet equals one mile. Okay, but again, I need to go to inches, so I need to get rid of feet. So since feet are on the top, I need to put feet down in the bottom and inches up on top. And I know that 12 inches is equal to one mile. All right, so when I take those and multiply out, I get that my linear speed is, um, let's see, 35, oops. 35 times 5280 times 12. Oops. Go back and fix that. That gives me 2217600. So 2,217,600 um, is, uh, and that would be, let's see, what were we left with? Inches per hour. Inches per hour is my current um, linear speed. All right, so in order to plug that in, I've got to now go back to this formula over here, and I've got to do 2217600 equals 13 times the angular speed, right? Because my radius was 13 since the wheel's diameter was 26. So then I've got to divide both sides by 13 here, and I get that my angular speed, if I divide by 13, is 170584.62 if I round properly. Okay, and again, we know that that has to be radians, okay, and my unit of time was hours, so that's radians per hour. Okay, so my angular speed is 170584.62 radians per hour. Okay, so part B says, what's the angular speed at the point at the center of the tire? All right, so again, we got to think about this wheel here, okay, and there's a quick picture we're talking about angular speed. A wheel, whether you're talking about the outside of the wheel or the inside of the wheel, since it's one piece, its angular speed is the same. So we know that the angular speed 
because it's one piece, the angular speed on the outside of the tire or the angular speed at the point in the center has to be exactly the same. So I don't have to do any work. I just have to understand the idea that if it rotates at one um, as one unit, I know that those two angular speeds have to be the same. Okay, so again, if this turns 30 degrees, whether the outside turns 30 degrees or the inside rotates 30 degrees, it's still rotating the same amount. Okay, but clearly from the picture I just drew, this guy right here, the distance that it covers is going to be a lot less than the distance the inside covers. So those, ang uh, those linear speeds are not the same, but the angle that it rotates um, is exactly the same. All right, so let's take a look at the next example. The next example says a large gear has a diameter of 24 centimeters. So we know the radius is 12 centimeters. And again, that's of a large gear. It says a small gear has a radius of 8 centimeters. So we know that the radius of the small gear is 8 centimeters. And it turns at 30 radians per second. So again, radians per time is my angular speed of the small gear. Okay, it says the small gear drives the large gear. So if you look at this picture here, um, again, these are connected um, somehow like by those teeth. So if the big one rotates two teeth, the small one's going to rotate that same amount. So what do we know if they're connected and working, at, um, if they're connected by a pulley or connected by their teeth? We know the linear speed of the small gear is equal to the linear speed of the larger gear. If one rotates you know, a, two teeth, the other one rotates two teeth, okay? Now think about the angular speed though. This smaller wheel is gonna rotate more times. It's gonna make more revolutions than that larger gear. All right, so again, that was the third thing we talked about. If they're connected by a belt or by teeth in this case, they're going to have the same linear speed, okay? So we know that if we're trying to find the linear speed of the large gear, we need to figure out the how many rotations or we need to figure out the angular speed and the radius. Well, the only downside is all we know is we know that the radius of that large gear is 12 centimeters. We don't know how fast it's turning. However, since we know that these two things are the same, the linear speed of the small is equal to the linear speed of the large, I know enough information about the small one. So we need to find the linear speed of the small um, gear and then we know that it's going to be the same as the larger one. Okay, so I'm going to find the radius and I'm going to multiply it by the angular speed. We know the radius is 8 centimeters and I know that it was 30 radians per second. So that's my speed. 30 radians per second is my angular speed. So I can just multiply those together and that gives me 240. And again, since we're talking about linear speed, that's distance. Well, my distance is centimeters and my time, it was radians per second, is per second. Okay, so I know this is the linear speed of the small, and it's also the linear speed of the large because those two are both equal to each other. So the next part says, what's the angular speed of the teeth on the large gear? Okay, so we know the linear speed of the large is equal to R times the angular speed of the large. Well, we know that, we just found that one out, was 240 centimeters per second. Going back, we know the radius of that large gear is 12, so we can plug in 12, and that's gonna allow us to find that angular speed. So all we have to do is divide both sides by 12, and that gives us 20 for our angular speed. And 20 what? We know it's radians per time, so it's radians per second. Okay, so again, that larger wheel is going to make less rotations, so the larger wheel's angular speed is 20 radians per second, but the smaller one was 30. So that smaller one is turning a lot faster. All right, so the last one says, what is the linear speed of the point at the center of the large gear? So we've got this large gear and we wanna figure out how fast is um, in miles per hour, in this case in centimeters per second, um, how fast is that um, point at the center moving? So again, we know our formula is R times omega. We just found out that our angular speed was 20 for the large, right? Because we're talking about the large one, okay? Except the radius at the center way at the middle is zero. So we're really gonna multiply by zero, okay? That little pin in the center is not moving at all. It's just spinning. 
So it does have an angular speed. It just does not go any further. So it, do it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't have a distance. So in this case, the linear speed is zero centimeters per second because the radius right at the center is zero. Now, if we were talking at a, about a point, you know, three centimeters out, then that would have linear speed because it would actually be traveling. But right at that center, that point is not moving at all. All right, and that's all we got for today.